Okay, this lab is the heat of neutralization. Before we get started with any of the um, procedure parts, I want to just show you what we're using. So we have several different graduated cylinders um, to measure out our chemicals. Remember, when it, the procedure tells you to measure, let's say, 50 milliliters or 25 milliliters, you want to do that inside a graduated cylinder. So I have several here. Um, they are kind of with the chemical that they have in them right now. And we have the chemicals that we have. We have some water that we're gonna use for part A. We have acids and bases. Okay, so we have sodium hydroxide, that's our base for both parts B and C, and both of those heat of neutralization reactions. We have sodium hydroxide as the base and AOH. And then we also have for part B, uh, there's hydrochloric acid. Uh, we're using one molar concentrations of all these acids and bases. And then for part C, there is um, acetic acid. Okay, and that's also a one molar concentration. I have a couple beakers. This is a beaker of water. We're going to heat this up in a few minutes. Uh, I also have another sample of water that's gonna go into our calorimeter to begin with. Um, so our calorimeter setup is like this. So we have, just to kind of take it apart, um, we have this 400 milliliter beaker here. This is just so that one, that it will sit on the table and not fall over. And then we have two calorimetry cups or two styrofoam cups that we're calling our calorimetry cups. Um, the 400 milliliter beaker may give a little bit of extra, uh, extra insulation as well, but mostly we're using it so that the cups don't fall over in the middle of our experiments. Okay, and then we also are going to put on top of this power meter um, a piece of cardboard that has a hole in it that we can fit our stopper and thermometer in. Um, so if you think about this setup, um, is this setup likely going to keep in everything, uh, any heat that's released inside that? Okay, think about that. It's definitely not going to be perfect. So this piece of cardboard is just sitting on top of this, um, on top of the cups. We also have a pretty giant hole in the cardboard, uh, and that's not all filled around with anything. Um, so there's a large source of air here from the calorimeter itself because we are using styrofoam, because we're using a lid that doesn't really fit on to our calorimeter. Um, so keep that in mind when you're answering questions today. back to that this calorimeter isn't perfect um, that's why we have to do part a part a is going to be finding the heat capacity of our camera of the calorimeter part a is finding the heat capacity of the calorimeter um, so this setup here is going to absorb some of the energy that's um, being transmitted in our reactions or our heat transfers um, so we need to know how much heat is going to be absorbed by our calorimeter here. So for part A, we're going to start with um, 50 milliliters of water inside our calorimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in there. I already measured that out in my graduated cylinder. Something to note about your setup is that you want this thermometer to be in the solution or in, in um, whatever's in your calorimeter. You don't want it to be like way up here you don't want it to uh, push through the cups and put a hole in them. Uh, so you want to kind of monitor where that thermometer is. And then we're going to have another sample of 50 milliliters of water that we're going to heat. So in a perfect calorimeter, all of the heat that is going to be released from this future hot water should be absorbed by the cooler water. But our calorimeter isn't perfect, so it's actually going to absorb some of that heat. Um, so we have to figure out how much of that heat is going to be absorbed by the calorimeter. Um, the procedure does tell you to um, heat up this second sample of water between 15 and 20 degrees warmer than our cool water. So we're going to need to get the temperature of our cool water first, and then that, that will tell us how much warmer that warm water needs to be. Um, typically, I have found that if you only heat it up 15 to 20 degrees um, warmer than your water already in your calorimeter, the experiment's not going to work very well. Um, so we're actually going to heat it up uh, between 30 to 35 degrees warmer. Okay, so the temperature that's already in our calorimeter, that water is at 
20.8 degrees Celsius. So our warm water, we're gonna need to get that to be about uh, about 50 to 65 degrees warmer. Um, a key so that you would not have to repeat this process over and over again uh, is to heat your water gently. Uh, inside that beaker, we wanna heat that very gently. We don't wanna crank up the hot plate all the way um, and so that it boils. We're just trying to heat the warm, warm the water um, so that it's warmer than the water that we have in our countermeasure. Um, so I'm gonna put this on the hot plate and turn my hot plate on. Uh, I'm not gonna turn my hot plate up more than um, 240 degrees, that reads on that little scale there. And then I'm gonna watch this pretty carefully so that I heat that water up gently. Once that water is warm enough, I'm gonna take the temperature of that water and then we're going to pour it in our calorimeter. Then we're going to monitor the temperature every 30 seconds for three minutes. Um, so when I do pour this water into my calorimeter, I need to be ready to start timing as well as taking the temperature every 30 seconds. Um, so make sure that you would have somebody right with us, who's to time, somebody who's looking at the thermometer um, so that you could be prepared to do all of that um, when the time comes. You don't want to let, you don't want to pour it in there and then let it sit for a few minutes and then start taking your temperature. That's not going to work very well. Um, but I do want to heat this up gently so it's starting to get, um, about the temperature that I want so I'm actually going to turn my hot plate off and then I will remove this um, but before right before I pour it into my camera I'm going to note the temperature of this warmer water here sodium hydroxide. I'm just letting that come to temperature. All of these chemicals have been sitting here on the counter for quite a while, um, but I do want to make sure that my base and the acid for part B are about at the same temperature. So I'm taking the temperature of my base right now, and then I'll make sure that it has about the same as our acid. In this case, for part B, that acid is hydrochloric acid. I've already measured that out in the graduated cylinder. Um, so once I'm finished with the uh, temperature measurement of my base, I'm going to rinse the thermometer um, before I put it into this piece of glassware to measure the temperature of our, of our acid. Uh, I don't want that reaction to happen on the tip of the thermometer. I only want that reaction to happen inside the calorimeter when I'm ready to mix those. Um, so this temperature of the base is about 20.9, 20.9. This acid and this base have been sitting here. I don't expect that the temperature of my acid here and my graduated cylinder is gonna be much different, but I do need to make sure that uh, I rinse off my thermometer so there's no base on it when I stick it into uh, this other container. ready to pour in my acid into the base in our calorimeter, I need to be ready to take the temperature. So I need to get that set up before I try to start measuring anything. So I'm ready to take the temperature when I need to. Okay, so I've spent those three minutes taking the temperature every 15 seconds so that we can calculate the heat that is going to be released by this reaction. So this is an exothermic reaction, so heat is being released. Um, that means that the temperature um, is going to go up. So we so we cannot directly measure the um, reaction that is happening inside our calorimeter because we have solutions of hydrochloric acid and a solution of sodium hydroxide. We can measure the solution temperature. Uh, we can measure things directly about the solution. We can measure the volume of the solution. We can measure the mass of solution. We can measure the temperature of those solutions. Um, but you cannot measure directly the reaction. 
Um, so do make sure that you reference the handout that should be in the PowerPoint uh, for how to kind of think about the relationship between the solution and the reaction and the solution, reaction, and the calorimeter. Um, so make sure that you do pay attention to um, the handout um, so that you're calculating these things correctly. So remember that the sign on energy that's being released is negative and energy that's being absorbed is going to have a positive sign. So outside of the report sheet for this particular lab, make sure that you do the temperature as final minus initial. Um, for this lab and the report sheet, you can just use whatever it tells you to. So they kind of rearrange the equations, um, but I do think that you should know how to um, do this outside of this particular lab. Um, so if you want to look at the handout, um, that's gonna have some helpful information on how to make those calculations. Uh, so that finishes up part B. For part C, everything is the same except that we're substituting hydrochloric acid for um, acetic acid. So we'll do the same thing. We'll come back and do the same thing. of our three minutes uh, for part C, the reaction between uh, the reaction between sodium hydroxide and acetic acid. Um, so now I'm just going to put this in the waste container. Uh, from the data that is provided, you should be able to fill in the rest of your report sheet. Again, make sure that you reference the handout. Um, it does tell you some helpful hints about where the calculations in the book are coming from versus how you would use those in um, a a different type of problem. So if you had problems given to you um, in your homework or whatever, you could do them this way. Um, but the book does kind of rearrange things um, ahead of time without telling you what they're doing. Um, so that is why you should reference that handout, uh, but you should be able to um, make the plots from the data that is given as well as finish up the report sheet, uh, parts A, B, and C.